The iPad has been one of my favorite devices from Apple, but a lot of times I hear people complaining, saying things like, I don't know why I even bought this iPad. I don't even end up using it. Or I just use my laptop instead of the iPad. It's just so much easier. And here's the thing. I completely understand where they're coming from because that was me as well. Heck, when I got my MacBook Pro, I wasn't using my iPad for like months. My iPad was just gathering dust. But here's the thing. Over time, Apple has done a great job adding some key updates to the iPad. And after that, I consciously started to use the iPad more and more in my day to day. I gotta say, I see things a little differently. Here's how I made the iPad more useful for myself and how you can make the most out of your iPad. First and foremost is using the iPad as a planner. Now I find the iPad being the perfect size for me to use as my planner every single day. As someone who's trying to balance a heck of a lot with three kids, multiple projects and businesses on the go, I need to constantly update my calendar and stay up to date on things that I need to be on top of. So the iPad is just a perfect size for me to carry around with me. It's bigger than an iPhone where I get more information and I'm able to see my full monthly calendar, yet it's more convenient and portable than actually carrying my laptop around. Overall, as a planner, as well as for way to see your calendar and see to your day-to-day -day things, the iPad is a great addition. Next up is emails and business. One of the main ways that I use the iPad is to help stay on top of emails. Now, one of the reasons why I like working on my iPad for emails is because I almost feel less distracted versus when I go on my laptop or computer, I feel like there's a lot more things I can do, but with the iPad, it kind of feels like a dedicated, uh, you know, organizational like work device for me. I guess it also depends on how I've kind of phrased it in my mind. And because of that, I think it's the perfect tool for smashing through some early morning email while you're chugging down a cup of coffee or tea. Also, the battery life being better than most laptops out there is helpful. You don't need to bother to like boot up your laptop to check your email. You can just flip this open and get going. Also, if you want to be able to browse through it in portrait mode, it's also really nice where I can just keep it in portrait mode and kind of just browse on the couch and see if there's anything important that I need to address. Another reason why I like using the iPad for my emails in particular is because it's super handy when viewing or editing documents and contracts. Having the ability to literally edit these contracts on the go with my pencil and sign off on them is really handy. So it kind of turns out to be like a one-stop solution. The next utility and arguably my biggest utility with the iPad is it functions as a really great note-taking solution, which is why I really recommend this for students and you know people that really want to take notes on the Go. The reason why I personally gravitate towards the iPad for note taking is because it feels much more convenient and lightweight to take around with me. If I want to take some quick notes, I can quickly open it up. The keyboard is big enough for me where I can type efficiently. In fact, most of my videos are scripted on the iPad. That brings us to the question, are digital notes actually better? I know there are pros and cons to both, but here's why I personally love digital notes. Number one, I love how things sync across all of my devices, making my notes and ideas accessible wherever I go. Sometimes, for example, let's say I've taken a note on my iPad and I'm at the car dealership getting my car service, I can still pull up that same note on my iPhone and I can add to it and continue where I left off. Number two, I can bring in inspiration directly from the internet into my workflow. This is really handy because sometimes I need to look up certain things when I'm writing up a script or something and I can just pull in JPEGs or ideas or post links directly into my note. Number three, there's tons of usability benefits like using multiple tools and colors with just one accessory. You can just use this one accessory to highlight and write and use marker and paint and all of that good stuff. Number four, and this is a big one, I can search up my notes. The iPad can actually recognize what you're writing out and it'll index it. So if you wanna search up something specific that you wrote down with the iPad, I can actually just search it up and it'll pull it right up. And last but not least, not to mention, it's something that's more eco-friendly over time. You're wasting less paper and it's all kind of just stored on the cloud. Okay, now here's a key thing I need to mention about the iPad. You really need to have the right accessories in order to get the most out of your iPad. And that's a common theme you're gonna see throughout this video. Because using these accessories really enhance what makes the iPad a more holistic solution slash device. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Logitech. Now, this particular keyboard case that I'm using is called the Combo Touch. And I really think it's a solid solution for anyone looking for a protective keyboard case with multi-functional support. What I really like about this keyboard is the fact that it's a two-part solution. This way, I can easily detach my iPad from the keyboard and use the iPad just as an iPad. And it's protected because it has all the covers all around it. It even comes with a built-in stand so you can prop it up wherever you need to. 
And then when you're done, you can just snap it back. So essentially this case allows you to type, sketch, view, and read your iPad all in one. As for the keyboard, it's a nice full-size keyboard giving you ample space for you to type. It's got a backlight for you to use in dim places. It comes with a multi-touch trackpad, which is super useful when you're using iPad gestures and for precise control. It also features four rows of buttons, the top most housing a bunch of important iPad OS shortcut keys, which I miss. A lot of keyboards don't have this. And you know, if I want to play pause my music or you know, adjust volume or something like that. It's handy to have all of those controls on your keyboard. Now, along with this, I'm using the Logitech Crayon, which is basically their version of the Apple Pencil. And in fact, it actually uses Apple Pencil technology and can work with all iPads 2018 or later. It charges using USB-C. There's a button on here. You can just turn it on and go. And there's even a battery indicator on the Crayon itself, which has up to seven hours of battery life on a single charge. Now, because this has the same Apple Pencil technology, you can easily annotate, take notes, sketch, and make lists. There's no issues with any of that. There's also no complicated Bluetooth pairing and everything. Also, I gotta say, in my opinion, the shape of it is more conducive to actually writing, taking notes, sketching, and stuff like that, so I like that. All in all, I think Logitech makes some great products, and if you're in the market for a great set of accessories like a keyboard case and a pencil, then these are solid options. Now, back to the video. Now, the first thing that most people think of when they think of an iPad is it's a great entertainment device, which I will back up. Having a larger screen than your phone makes this perfect for quickly watching something on the go, whether it's YouTube or Netflix. It's a great size to consume content. I'm able to prop this up anywhere and use the kickstand at the back here and just kind of set it up while I'm using the treadmill or doing some chores, washing dishes or anything like that. It's also great for reading. In fact, I actually use this to read a lot of news articles on it because the photos are nice and vivid and everything looks nice and good. Which brings me to the next way of using this iPad, which is as a kid's device. Being a baseline entry level iPad, this is the perfect kid's device. It's great, it's trial friendly. Especially being a base level iPad, even if something happens to this iPad, I'm not too concerned about about losing like thousands of bucks or something like that. So I'd much rather they play with this than play with like an iPad Pro, much less to lose here. <laughs> okay, which brings me to the next utility, which is using this as a camera monitor. Now there's an app that I actually use on this called Baby Monitor. I just use that app and basically I can set it up and it works with all Apple devices and I can monitor my kids on my Apple Watch, on my iPhone, on any Apple device. And basically I can even have two-way communication. I can turn on lullaby or soft noise or white noise, whatever it's called. I can do all of that with this one app. So I highly recommend you check out that app if you're interested in using this as a baby monitor. Another benefit of owning an iPad, you can actually use your iPad as a dual monitor with your MacBook. So you get a secondary display along to use with your iPad, which is really handy, especially if you're on the go and you wanna be able to use two screens. I do it all the time. Next up, and the reason why a lot of people actually gravitate towards the iPad is using it as a sketch pad. Now, sketching is a pretty big part of my job, whether it comes to storyboarding or even just sketching out a thumbnail for me to put in a video. So having the ability to quickly quickly draw out something with my hand wherever I go is super handy. All right, all in all, I think it's easy to overlook the iPad as an extra piece of accessory that's not really required. And that's understandable because you can definitely do a lot without it and you don't really need an iPad, especially if you have a laptop. But having those multiple forms of input with that added flexibility in a smaller, cheaper, more compact, with arguably a better battery life package, it does get quite handy. I really think that there's a lot of use cases for the iPad iPad, which people just need to try out and actually get into the habit of it, like all the ones that I mentioned earlier. Once you actually try some of these things, you might find that they actually improve the quality of your life or improve your workflows, and it helps you really see the versatility of the iPad as a primary or a secondary device. So in any case, if you like this video, you know what to do. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay blessed, peace.